Crossroads Media. No way! There's no way! I don't know. And it's a bad thing that my job is to talk about what happened, but I don't know. They had no business of winning that game. Now, part of me loves that. The fact that they went on the road to beat Andy Reid after he had a bye. You play sloppy as hell. Your offensive coordinator sucked. A.J. Brown was non-existent. You don't have Dallas Goddard. Your offensive line was getting beat up early. Spags had you on ice skates. Okay, you had poor tackling, dumb penalties. Fletcher Cox, that was stupid. Brandon Graham should have been called. Instead, it was a false start on the Chiefs. The list goes on and on. Darius Slay gets danced out of his shoes, pants by a rookie in the first half. There was so much stuff that was a disaster for the Eagles. But they win this game. The Chiefs had a double-digit lead at half. Wow, how ironic is that? DeAndre Swift was a dog. Jalen Hurts, after missing Devontae Smith and instead throwing it in the feet of your backup tight end, missing Devontae Smith and then responding by hitting him over the middle and then getting him to the one-yard line before a tush-push. Wow. You had play calls where it's third and one, you're in shotgun, and DeAndre Swift loses yards. That's dumb, stupid, embarrassing play calling when you have a play that's basically unstoppable. How can you be that tragic? I've been defending Brian Johnson all by week long, saying I love the strides that he took since the early stages and the failures that he was doing when he was very raw. He was learning on the job, and he was doing much, much more. He took a big step back for me even through this win, you know, but Sean decided the complete opposite. The second half comes around, and yeah, they got lucky because Vandez Scantling probably should have caught that football, and instead of shutting out the Chiefs in the second half, they put up seven and then potentially a loss on the scoreboard. But that didn't happen. And Kelsey drops passes. Hassan Reddick was in his face all night chirping away. Maybe there's something to that. You know, and every time I see someone get in the face of a great player, I wonder, in what world? You better answer the bell. Now, it's not Garrett Stubbs, your backup catcher running his mouth. It's a superstar who started the game off letting them know, we'll be here all night. Now, unfortunately, they didn't really have that same level of impact throughout the first half. Josh Sweat is jumping off sides. Fletcher Cox can't bring down Pat Mahomes along the sideline. And then Josh Sweat, if you go see the replay, he's giving you zero sense of urgency just in case Mahomes did squeak by Fletch. He half-assed it until he realized I got to turn on the Jets and try my best, but it was already too late. Bad, 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 bad. Until it was good. Oh, man. Roby comes back from injury. Pops Travis Kelsey. Here's a big turnover. The damaging part was after that, wide receiver screens. Here's what I won't allow to to happen here. Because I know that there are some people in the media and some fans out there that say, this is why you're not allowed to react in the moment. They won the football game, didn't they? No, no, no. You can be angry at Brian Johnson. You could be mad at a lot of things that happened in this game. And I'm the first one that even during their 8-1, and one, I'd say, look, stop nitpicking so much. This is fine. They're 8-1. and one. And I think all of that stands true with every other game but this one. And this is a thousand-foot view. So I'm looking down, and it's sort of the overhead view of it all. If you were to lose to Kansas City on the road after Andy Reid has a bye when you're 8-1 and one in your first nine games in a competitive matchup where you, you did great things and you just happened to lose to a great team, there's nothing to hold your head down about. That stuff happens. There's reasons why teams don't go 16-0, 17-0 every single season. There's no shame. There is a lot of shame when you get embarrassed, though, and you're supposed to 
to put up a fight against this opponent because even though Dallas Goddard's not there, you had two weeks to basically set something up. It's inexcusable to look that pathetic offensively. That was a joke. So you're allowed, in my eyes, to lose against the Chiefs on the road where they are basically dominant at Arrowhead. There's nothing wrong with that. The way it was progressing, though, where you looked like the New York Jets, and that's what they looked like. They looked like the Jets. I'm not sugarcoating anything. Zach Wilson led Jets. That's what the Eagles were basically providing for us. Three and out, trash, 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 three and out. And I'll give credit to uh, to Spags and that defense and what they were doing up front to cause all sorts of issues. Lane Johnson and 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 um uh uh Jalen Hurts, they didn't know if it was a screen play or not. I don't know what happened there. Plays were getting blown up. It looked like Jalen Hurts was indecisive if he wanted to hand the football off or keep it himself. Uh, there was a lot in everyone's position group. There was something that was probably tragic for a majority of this football game. But they found the way, and I can't run away from the fact that in their DNA, when you count them out, when you think it's over, when you think that they are definitely dead, here's the Undertaker, Jeff. So you are allowed in this game, I think, to analyze more than the first nine games on how it looked against a really good opponent. And the outcome was magnificent. You won that football game down 10 when you had no business doing it. That's a common trend. That's a theme. And now throughout this gauntlet, you beat Miami, you beat Dallas in South Philly, and you beat the Kansas City Chiefs on the road. Keep bringing me these gauntlets, baby. And I didn't love it. I didn't love it. I was aggravated. I did not love it. And I expressed that pretty vocally on social media along with everybody else. But this gauntlet, though, how are they going to win? Well, the Lions had an epic win against the Bears, and I had Lions fans talking their smack when the Eagles looked like they were completely going to roll over, and I made sure I had the last laugh. Massive for the NFC, where the standings are type of conversation. Just beautiful. Jalen Hurts, I guess, now is the favorite to win NFL MVP at plus 250. No surprise. I guess there's one thing you got to recognize with this kid. No matter time, no matter where the game is, no matter if you're down, no matter if they were struggling, no matter what, no matter the situation, if you need a play, he's going to help make that play. If you need to get down to the one, you could think they suck all you want. But with the game on the line, the kid delivers. And I think it says a lot due to his personality. All right, we say about how the kid's wired, the mental makeup, and all that. He can get yelled at by A.J. Brown on the sidelines after that interception happened. And he just takes it. He accepts it. He says his words. He embraces what A.J. Brown's saying. They're best friends. They move on. And then they go win a damn football game. He could put it right behind him. You know, he just has a personality that's unique. It's different. And with the game on the line, he settles in and does what's needed to to get a win. It's rare. Come on. You don't win that game. You don't deserve to win that game. You sucked in that game. You sucked. That was terrible. But Jalen Hurts, you have the quarterback. You have the difference maker. 